Welcome back, everybody. I do love this. When we, when many of us think of sharks, we think of pop culture phenomenon of Jaws, which continues to be as popular as ever, even over 45 years after its release. That's right, but the appeal of sharks actually goes far beyond that, and one local individual is doing his part to share his shark knowledge and appreciation of history with everyone. I recently headed down to Westerly, where I met Keith Cowley and checked out his very cool Living Sharks Museum and Research Center. Get ready, we had some fun. The Living Sharks Museum in Westerly is loaded with history. I couldn't wait to step inside and meet owner curator Keith Cowley. As you can see, Keith and I both got the blue memo today. But I wasn't there to discuss wardrobe options. This place is endlessly fascinating. I was very interested in what was going on in the world of modern sharks, living sharks because I had spent 20 years studying prehistoric sharks. And in 2008, I had finally just made this move into working with modern sharks. And I had got so wrapped up in the conservation side of it, uh, I wanted to know what I could do. So Living Sharks Project was a way for me to distill all that information and then eventually present it to the public. After years of collecting and amassing knowledge, he realized he had something quite unique on his hands. And I would get colleagues coming in trying to figure out, you know, what I was really doing because I had all these amazing things. And he said, you know, there's no such thing as a shark history museum, at least not in the U.S., that anybody knows about. You see bits and pieces of these things in different museums, but not all under one roof. So what I had apparently was significant, and I decided, let's get behind it. And Living Sharks Museum was born. Sharks are at the forefront of the culture, now more than ever. It's actually a very exciting time for sharks, and the more visibility sharks get, the better, because there are more opportunities to take action and protect them where needed. I would say, you know, Jaws was sort of the beginning of that. You know, in 1975, all of a sudden the world was very aware of sharks. And it really changed the way people thought about sharks. Not that there were, not just that there were sharks out there, but that they may pose a problem for us in any uh, source of water. So a lot of shark research actually was done during this time period to sort of dispel these ideas and sort of reduce this Jaws effect, as we like to call it, uh, and change the perspective you know, back to more of a neutral, if not positive, attention to sharks. You know, Keith, few pieces of uh, music are as evocative and ominous and iconic as the Jaws theme song, right? That's true. But we don't want Spielberg to sue us, so what do you say we look at some really cool shark photos with a different piece of music? I like it. Let's use the Kirby Quiz theme. All right. I wonder how this will go. Uh, that's really not the same. Anyway, before leaving, I was eager to learn a few more things, and I was pumped to share some contributions and shark knowledge of my own. Here at Living Sharks Museum, we've got a lot of samples from living sharks as well as prehistoric sharks. We've got the jaw of a bull shark here. And it's great being able to see this up close and personal and, and see all the many rows of teeth because these sharks go through about 30,000 teeth in their lifetime. The bull shark's mouth is almost as big as mine. <laughs> this is the tooth from the Megalodon. This was a 50 to 60 foot long prehistoric shark that is no longer alive today, even though some people think it is. And their teeth can be found all up and down the eastern seaboard, sometimes inland in rivers and creeks, which is where I dive to find them. Cool. And of course, the rarest of all of the rare shark artifacts here at the museum, the shark vacuum cleaner. He's going to throw me out. <laughs> That makes me laugh. <laughs> That's silly nonsense, but Keith is such a nice guy. And I, was, I was actually thinking of you when I was there because you love Jaws oh, look, and all I, that stuff. If Jaws is on TV, I'm sitting down watching it. I've seen it a million times, and I do. I love it. But 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 also when you look back, because Jaws really did give a bad name to sharks right. as well. You right. Know. It is like you were saying, pop culture phenomenon. Sure. But at the same time, it's more than that, and he's really preserving that history down there. Absolutely, just yeah. really, yeah. really very, cool. very, very cool. Huge thank you to Keith. You can, of course, check the museum out for yourself. Now, admission is always free, and they are open Fridays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. For more information, just head to roadshow.com.